right. So next up is uh, Michael Dirtbum from Mozilla, and he's going to talk tell us about iodide. Hi. Good morning. Uh, yeah. So. I'm uh, presenting something about Python at a Julia conference. I'm fully aware of that. This is kind of like a, something we're doing over here, please come join us kind of talk. Um, so I work at Mozilla on the data engineering team, and there we have a project called Iodide, which I would love to talk more about today, but I have so little time. Check out this uh, blog post from March uh, that will explain it all. Basically, the gist of it is, we're doing data science in a different way. The traditional Jupyter-like model on the left there, you have a browser, and you do most of your computation in a kernel that is remote to the browser, right? In the iodide model, we're actually putting the kernel in the browser. So we're doing all the computation locally. It means you don't need a very complex server, you don't need cloud resources, um, and things kind of distribute in a different way. I'm not saying this is the better way, but it's a different set of trade-offs that we're playing with. Of course, we're at Mozilla. We love doing more things with the browser. That's partly what this is, and it's, a, it's an experiment to increase the surface area of what you can do in the browser. Um, this is what an iodide notebook looks like. Um, you have you know, code on the left, and you have a sort of output presentation going on on the right, and you have animation and all kinds of other cool things you can do in the browser you can do in iodide. Um, of course, the original version, it was doing the data science computation in JavaScript, which is kind of cool in some ways. It's a very, very fast runtime, uh, but there's a lot of rough edges in the design, particularly around numeric stuff. Um, it's not familiar to a lot of data science programmers. Um, and the, the sort of ecosystem around data science in JavaScript sort of exists, but it's not nearly as mature and broad. So. What did we do? Well, let's take one of the leading uh, data science ecosystems, not the one in this room, but another leading one, which is, Pyodide, or which is Python, and let's bring that to the browser. So that's what Pyodide is. And we basically take the C Python runtime, all of the data science libraries, NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, and we compile them to WebAssembly. Now, what is WebAssembly? WebAssembly is a, a new way of shipping code to the browser um, that's actually a bit code. It works at a lower level than JavaScript. And it takes that bit code and then compiles it down to native code that runs almost as fast as the original thing that you brought in, except that it's portable, it's going to run in everybody's browser, and it runs in a nice, secure sound sandbox. It's a much safer way to ship code to clients. Um, in addition to just doing that, we also have a lot of deep interoperability between the browser and the Python layers. So you can access the DOM, you can access all kinds of web APIs. I'm going to show that in my demo coming up. So let's go to the demo. Um, OK, how's that font for everyone? Maybe slightly bigger? Yeah. Um, OK, so it's kind of a notebook-like environment. We have code on the left, and we can, we can execute cells. Um, the cell types are indicated with these little head, these little percent percent headers. So this indicates it's going to be a Python cell instead of a JavaScript cell. And when we run that, it actually goes out and fetches the whole Python interpreter, loads it into your browser, caches it, so it only does that the first time. And then now we can start running Python. So this is standard standard Python going on here. We can create Python data structures, and they automatically get converted to and from JavaScript data structures. So when I'm running this little bit of Python, it's actually converting it to JavaScript, and then JavaScript is actually what's doing the display of it. So the, browser, the, the display actually knows nothing about Python. It just knows it's getting something converted from Python. Um, you, can, you, can, you have full access to uh, the DOM, so you can add things like just this little red box content. You can even do more sophisticated things like make a little button, and when you click on it, you know, call a callback. All of this is happening from Python. So now you could use Python to build a, a web application like Google Docs or Google, Gmail or, or whatever. Not suggesting that's a great idea, uh, but, but it's certainly possible. I think the, the real reason for doing this is because you want to expose to the user the Python itself, which is not the usual web application kind of thing. That's more of like a data science thing. Uh, let's see. How much time do I have? I want to make sure. Four minutes. Four minutes. Okay. Um, so 
the real power of this, of course, is not, I've just shown kind of core Python functionality, but all the data science libraries are there too. So we can import NumPy and make a little sine wave here, and it's printing out the values of sine. That's not very exciting. You probably want to plot them, right? So you can import matplotlib. It's going to go out and actually, at that very moment, go and get matplotlib, and then we can plot the sine wave, and not only do we have a plot, it's fully interactive, so you can pan and zoom around, and all of this is happening in the browser. So there's no round trip going on between here and some cloud server. So this is a lot faster and a lot more efficient than what Jupyter is doing when you have interactive plotting. Um, and what's kind of cool too, when, when you build this thing where the Python and Java are very close, you could do your data science computation in Python where that's really strong, but do your visualization in JavaScript and pull in one of the ma many JavaScript visualization libraries like D3 and use that to plot the data. So here, I'm actually gonna bring in Plotly, and this is just the vanilla JavaScript version of Plotly, and plot the same data there. And now we have the same plot, but it's using an entirely different visualization stack, and it totally works. And there's no copying when you move the data back and forth. It's super efficient, and it's all just very well integrated. So this is kind of a cool little thing. Why am I here at JuliaCon? I'm gonna go back to my slides. Um, Actually, yeah, so this is coming to Julia. Um, Kino's already been working on this, and at Mozilla we gave a research grant to Valentin Chiravi, and so he's gonna be working on it over the next few months. Um, and we wanna kind of create this ecosystem. Yeah, we wanna create a sort of like full ecosystem of a bunch of different data science languages in the browser. And why are we focusing on data science languages? Because those are the ones where it matters to show the code to the user, where there's an end user that really wants to work in this kind of environment, as opposed to some other traditional languages where you would just be building user-facing web apps, which kind of has a different set of problems. So we're really focusing on data science. Um, we always get asked about the performance. Once, if you take this thing and you put, put Python in the browser, how much slower is it? It turns out it's between anywhere between one and 10 times slower. Um, things that are doing like tight C numerical loops are about the same speed. Things that do a lot of Pythonic stuff, dynamic stuff, are a lot slower. That's because making uh, function pointer calls is slower in WebAssembly, something we're working on and trying to improve. But it's really not that bad. Also, you know, Firefox is kind of ahead of WebAssembly uh, uh, than Chrome. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I'm at Mozilla. The numbers just show that. Chrome has a little catch up to do. I'm sure they'll get there. Um, yeah, so that's it. Julie is coming. We're an open source project. We're looking for contributors. Uh, please visit us at this URL. Uh, we're happy for all kinds of help, whether it's Python or Julia or whatever you're interested in. And credit to the rest of the team. And that's where you can find it. You can play with this right now. Nothing to download. Thank you. All right. Questions? How, how to find it? How to find the project? Yeah. This is the URL right here, iodide.io. You go there, you can play with it, and then from there there's links to the project, the GitHub project, and various things. Uh, yeah, so the question is basically how do we, how are we running the Python, if I can summarize it. Um, so we take the, the C Python interpreter, which is written in C, and compile that to WebAssembly. And once we have that in the browser, then we can just send it strings of Python code, and it's running it like the standard Python interpreter is. So the compiler actually, or the compiler slash interpreter actually exists in the browser. You do need a WebAssembly runtime environment, but all the major browsers have that now.